When you try and try and try Until you can't try no more You must never give up It's not a waste of time Cause the good Lord is right beside you And everything is gonna be fine He's the one who make it right I did my first record at the age of 12 for Prince Buster. Now Prince Buster, he was uh, an ambassador in the music industry. I mean, at the time it was ska music, you know. Uh, I can remember uh, on the day of the recording, uh, it was myself along with Errol Dunkley. Now Errol Dunkley was like my singing partner. We were good friends as well and we did everything together. You know? uh, the song actually, uh, was written by Errol. It was called Faye is Gone. Now, on the day of the recording, I can remember we went down to the studio and it was crowded. Lots of uh, musicians and other singers. And it was our turn for recording, so we went uh, in front of the musicians and, you know, we started singing. But uh, Prince Buster, he wasn't really pleased with the way we were performing the song, so he decided that I should just do the song by myself, alongside with him, instead of Errol. Now, I was very sad about that because, uh, I mean, Errol was my friend and I really wanted to sing the song with him. But at the end of the day, I recorded a song with Prince Buster, you know. Uh, I continued going to school and I can remember coming from school, you know, I would hear the song on the radio fusion and I would just stand and have a good listen and I would start fantasizing about me being on stage. All right. All right. All right. And, you know, just basically start fantasizing. That was good anyway. So shortly after that, about a year after that, um, I had to come to England to join my parents. Uh, I arrived at a place called Manchester, uh, yeah, Manchester Airport. So, you know, it was bye bye to Errol, bye bye to uh, all my friends, and bye bye to Jamaica. Now, when I arrived in England, it was like a different scene completely because it was dark. Nothing like the place where I'd just left. Anyway, I attended school uh, in Preston and I found Preston really boring. So, you know, I, I said to my sister, I mean, you know, where are all the black people? Because there wasn't many black people in Preston, Lancashire. And I didn't have any friends and things like that. So, you know, my sister says, well, everyone is in London. I says, where is London? Well, apparently I had an aunt living in, in, in London and my mother decided to send me down to spend some time with her. So I came down to London, uh, stayed with my aunt, attended a school called John Kelly School in Neesden. You know, I um, started entering a few singing competitions, singing for my friends and 
All the things that a young man would do normally. After I left school, I started moving around, going to a few clubs, meeting a few guys that sing and things like that, you know. Uh, I decided then that I would uh, really, I wanted to become a singer. So I started making records for every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, some small time producers. Uh, I remember I made a song called I Don't Want to Love You. And I did another song called uh, Daddy's Home and Muriel. And I started singing for companies like Palmer, Trojan, Creole. I started singing for everyone, you know. I had a few hits, domestic hits. And, uh, I became known. Anyway, I, I heard uh, of, of a band that was going on tour to Europe. And I decided that I would go with the band, you know. Uh, we, we went to Italy, Spain, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, Holland, all over. It was a great experience for me because I was doing like four, five spots a night. No, no, not five spots a night, like three spots a night. And it was a good experience because but it was very tiring. And there were times when, you know, sometimes the club was empty and you still have to sing and uh, it was something else. Anyway, after about a year of that, touring all over, I decided to come back to London. I came back to London and I had a cousin who, he was an agent for Palmer. You know, he, he, he was booking artists all, all over, all over England. So I continued to work. But because of the songs that I made before I left, you know, my name was uh, established to a degree, so I was able to get jobs from those songs. You know, and then my, my cousin, he started producing. We made an album, uh, an album called The Great Junior English. It uh, was released by Trojan. Uh, Brinsley Ford of Hasworth, he played rhythm guitar on that album. I played bass. Now, it was the first time that Brinsley ever do session work, you know, played on, on a record. And it was the first time I ever played bass on an album. The reason why I played the bass is because the bass player didn't turn up and the session had to go on. Now, my cousin, he had confidence that I was able to play the bass, so he suggested that I should play the bass, and I ended up playing the bass. And the album turned out mm, quite successful. It was all right. So after a long recession of uh, everything, you know, um, I, I met up with a guy called Clem, and he started. We started doing some recordings together. And, but Clem had an outlet, uh, someone who was actually releasing the records. But for some reason, he didn't want me to meet the person who was releasing the record. But a friend of mine called Jason, he came to me one day and said, uh, a man called Rana is looking for you. You know, he, now Mr. Rana, he had a company called Burning Sounds. And apparently he was looking for me because of the records that I've established over the, over the years. But when Jason told me that Rana wanted to see me, I didn't take it seriously. But on several occasions, uh, Jason keep on telling me, uh, 
Rana wants to see you. So I decided one day that I would go and see Mr. Rana. Uh, I went down and I see Mr. Rana. And he had a record shop downstairs. And there was this guy called Redman working in his record shop. So, you know, I told Redman that I would like to see Mr. Rana. So, uh, he buzzed Mr. Rana from downstairs and Mr. Rana told him that I should come upstairs. So I went upstairs and I saw Mr. Rana. And he was really glad to see me. He said, I've been looking for you for about over a year, you know. So, well, I asked him, what does he really want to see me about and things like that? And he says, well, I'm interested in, in making records with you because I've heard the previous uh, records that you've made and, you know, I like them and I would like to work with you. At the time, I had two songs that I've, I recorded uh, of my own. One of them was called So In Love uh, and, and the other one was called You're So Good To Me. I started working with, with Mr. Rana. So we went in the studio and he actually he released So In Love and it was, you know, it was quite successful. And after that he released You're So Good To Me and that was also successful. So he became more interested in working with me. So uh, I went in the studios and I did a song for him called Never win, never lose. And that went crazy, you know. So he decided that uh, he would like to do an album. So I started working on an album, and it was really hard work, you know. I had to prepare the songs, uh, get a musician, and, you know, but we did it in stages anyway. But um, he then decided that before the album he would release another song. time it was all lovers rock you know and I was like uh, the king of lovers rock I was doing uh, personal appearances for uh, different different people at the hotels and uh, at beauty competitions and I was very very busy I was doing lots of radio shows mm. I was meeting people like uh, Empire Roscoe David Simmons, Tony Blackburn, you know, uh, whenever people like Empire Rasco, I mean, he was one of the biggest radio DJ and on, on, on Radio One. And whenever he, he had a, a show, he would call uh, like my cousin and say, um, uh, what is Junior doing? Does he want to come and do a PA? And I would go and I would do a PA. And, you know, it would have been very crowded because Empire Rasco, he was a household name. and. He was very popular and he used to draw a lot of crowds. So, you know, it was really great times. I don't work because we're so tight. See each other most every night. She let me have the master key. That's why I trust her explicitly. She don't let nobody know, no. She don't let nobody know. I remember in 
1976 I was voted uh, best male vocalist, reggae male vocalist and that also boosts my popularity and things went on but after a while things began to get a bit uh, not as busy you know and uh, burning sounds for some reason started going through certain tribulations so you know they, they, they actually went in, in, in liquidation so I was left uh, on my own but uh, uh, I established a name for myself so I decided that I would start uh, producing my own self which wasn't a very good idea because really producing yourself it you know you need to have enough money to get uh, to, to, to advertise the record because if you do a record no matter how good it is if you can't advertise it it's, it doesn't value anything you know people can't get a chance to hear it so I started producing myself and I did, did the first song it was called Hey Baby uh, which wasn't bad it, it went down okay at the, uh, at the time, it was Tony Williams, he was on Radio 1 and, you know, he, he was playing it. There wasn't so many pirate stations at the time, so things was a bit different. But I used to get lots and lots of, of write-up, like in Black Echoes, uh, The Gleaner, and all those papers, you know. And I used to do lots and lots of radio interviews. Anyway, hey baby, um, it went on okay. Uh, after that, there was a little recession. I met up with Bubblers from Undivided Roots, Tony, and they said that they were interested in doing something with me. So uh, uh, we made a record called Ready to Learn. It was in a very small studio. I mean, three people couldn't hold in the studio comfortably. And Don Campbell was on drums, uh, Bubblers and keyboard, Tony, and on, on, on guitar, and dashi and percussion, and, and the song went down quite su successful. song called She Don't Let Nobody and that one did very very well and after She Don't Let Nobody I did Body Fusion. Now Body Fusion created a, a lot of excitement and created lots and lots of interest and everything was bubbling. Baby, And that went on for a while and then things quietened down again. So I became a bit lost for ideas. I really was searching for 
uh, uh, a particular material to do, you know, and I became very lost. But fortunately, I met up with a guy called T-Roy. You know, T-Roy was a producer, he was a soul producer. I decided to do something on the soul side. So T-Roy gave me a track and I studied the track for about a month and then I wrote a song for the track called Say That You'll Stay. Say that you'll stay uh, came out and it created uh, lots and lots of interest. Uh, people like David Rodigan and you know lots of DJs were falling in and they wanted to play it and you know they were encouraging me and trying to get it into the right hands because it's a powerful song and it could become a hit song. But unfortunately. Uh, after inquiring, I realized that I needed uh, money behind it, and you know, I myself could not really fund it. Fund it. So it, it, it didn't actually do what it should have done, you know, because it was lacking of fun. Yeah, babe. Unfortunately, I, I was diagnosed uh, MS, which is multiple sclerosis, and it threw me down for a while. So, you know, my mobility became very limited, you know, and I was in the hospital for some time. And then it, it, he's, it left me for about 10 years. But in between all of that, you know, I tried to get back into the show business, like, doing some stage work and things like that, but I wasn't able to keep up with it because it was a bit strenuous. You know, but I was managing, still recording, still doing records and keeping active in the business. But then, came back again, you know, in a, in a more serious way, whereas my mobility became worse. So I had to uh, mainly concentrate on making records and but after the experience I've had being in, being in the hospital and you know being very sick I decided to change my style I decided to sing songs uh, praising the Almighty giving praise on, on to God for for really keeping me and bringing me through this sickness you know so I did an album I recorded an album, the album is called Full Force, uh, which I'll be releasing uh, in Jamaica. And then from Jamaica, you know, um, I'll release it in England, but firstly I'm going to release it in Jamaica. So it's an album that I'd like you all to listen out for, it's called Full Force. The tracks are really uh, giving praise unto the Almighty, so it's, 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 it's kind of gospel orientated. Know, which is a very, very good album, and I'd like you all to listen out for it. It's called Full Force. I changed my style. I just want to know what are we going to do? Someone's got to tell me. Your children need you now. Don't understand. 
started start singing with a voice that I actually uh, started with in the first instance because when I started singing I wasn't singing that high falsetto voice voice I was singing a natural voice and so I went back to my natural voice now and I'm singing songs uh, that, that comforts me, like giving praises unto the Almighty. In love, you are seen to feel the spirit. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to the Almighty God. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank Stuart's video production for making this DVD possible. And I'd like to uh, send greetings for a few friends who stuck by me over the years. I'd like to say hi to my entire family and to people like Jason who uh, in, in the first instance linked me with Mr. Rana, so that I was able to establish a few records over the years. And uh, people like Frenchy, known as Countryman, you know, I'd like to say hello to him. I'd like to say hello to Michael uh, Selector, who plays on RGR Radio, and a few uh, of the presenters on, on Roots Radio as well. I'd like to say hi to a friend called Beige, and for all those who I have forgotten, you know, I haven't entirely forgotten them, but I'd like to say greetings to, to them all. And not forgetting RGR Radio, all the presenters, and Mr. C himself, who controls, and all the players of RGR because they've supported me, and the man himself, Mr. Winston Francis. Enough respect to Winston Francis. Very good man. Another day in my life and I'm such a happy man I am given another chance Another chance Life is such a precious thing And you're worthy to be praised I'll praise you forevermore oh, no. I won't worry about a thing oh, no. I'm so glad that I Atomic weapons to kill all the human race, I say. Get it, 